Thank you. For the Kai Karanga. I declare this congregation to be in session. Please remain standing and join with us in singing the traditional graduation song, Gardiamus, the words of which are on the screen. Please be seated. Aina waka, aina mona fakahi, aina taifa, tena koto katoa. Kia urana, kalofa lava, malo e laumali, fokalofa lahi atu. Talohani, fokatalofa atu. Nisabula, Nimenhau, Namasti, Nahaba. A very warm welcome to this, your ceremony, one of three here in Palmerston North today that complete our graduations for the year. My name is Chris Kelly. I'm a very proud Massey graduate and I've served on the University Council since 2005 and as Chancellor for the last year. At today's ceremonies, we have a total of 393 graduating 39 of whom will have the qualification, the highest qualification this university offers, a doctoral degree. At this ceremony, we have 134 graduates, 26 master's recipients, and 16 doctorates, all from either the College of Health or the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. By the end of this year, Massey University will, will have produced a total of 6,000 295 new graduates, bringing our total alumni family around the world to more than 126,000. Graduation day is a day of celebration, an opportunity for the university and you, your whanau, your family, your friends, to recognise your hard work and success. Technology now makes it easier to share your big day with a wider audience. All our ceremonies are streamed live on the internet and there is a link on the Massey University homepage, which I'm sure many of the more technologically minded of you in today's audience will have already located. Please feel free to text, tweet or email the link to anyone you know who was unable to attend today. It will be a permanent record of what I'm sure for many of you will be amongst one of your proudest moments. And while talking of recognition, it's important that you remember to thank all those people who have backed you and contributed to your success during your studies, your family, your friends, and of course the faculty and support staff of the university. To ensure you don't forget, I would like you to join me in acknowledging them now. The ceremony we're about to go through today is very traditional. It has its roots in graduation ceremonies developed 800 years ago. The, tr the traditions such as the robes we wear, capping, the mace, the singing of Gardi Amis and awarding honorary degrees to outstanding citizens links us to the strong heritage of universities. 
Universities are institutions of higher learning in which the teaching and learning environment is provided by academics actively involved in the creation of new knowledge through research and scholarship. You will graduate today as the beneficiary of a university education. As university graduates, you will be critical to the future social, economic and cultural development of your communities. As a graduate of Massey University, you will inherit the reputation of this highly regarded institution. The reputation of a university is built on the achievements of its past and current faculty and past students. Evidence of the achievements of our faculty and, alu uh, and alumni like Sir Richard Taylor, Kate Sylvester and Sir Graham Henry, to mention a few, is all around us. We pride ourselves on producing people who put New Zealand on the global map for its innovation, creativity, research and teaching. And we celebrate all our can-do graduates who get out there and make a difference. And it's this performance track that allows us to rightly claim to be the engine that will drive the new New Zealand. The number of accolades, awards, prizes and other recognitions received this last year by our current students and faculty indicates our track record will continue to grow. The university is a major New Zealand business with a turnover of more than $400 million per year and is a very significant employer in the three regions in which it has a presence. The management is led by the Vice-Chancellor, who is the equivalent of the Chief Executive Officer. Governance is the responsibility of the University Council, consisting of a mix of appointees, members elected by students, staff and our large alumni body of close to 130,000 graduates and many others who have worked as staff in the university. You may be aware that the government has plans to reduce the size of all university councils to a maximum of 12 members, on the grounds that this will result in greater commercial focus, faster and better decision making. However, in my view, a university is much more than just a business. For example, its prices are controlled by the government's fee setting regulations. A university has social responsibilities to its students, to its staff, and to advance learning to society as a whole. Its range of stakeholders are much wider than a company's and therefore demands a wider representation. Going forward, we must ensure that we retain diversity on this university's governing body. It's important on these occasions to celebrate some of Massey's successes. We have a firm eye on the future and this year launched our updated strategy called Shaping the Nation and Taking the Best to the World. The short title is The Road to 2025. The major shift is to push out our time horizon to just over a decade from now and put in place our responses to forces that drive not only Massey's future but New Zealand's, things like globalisation, technology enabled learning, population diversity, partnerships with other organisations around the world and of course the growth of our largest city, Auckland. Earlier this year our Vice-Chancellor, the Honourable Steve Mahari, visited China, a visit that coincided with that of a delegation led by the Prime Minister. We have a strong commitment to growing our opportunities in the international arena and our expertise in agri-food in particular creates enormous potential for growth in Asia. Last week, as many of you will be aware, President, China's President Xi Jinping visited New Zealand along with his wife, China's First Lady, Madam Peng Li Yuan. At a special graduation ceremony on our campus in Wellington on Thursday, Massey confirmed upon Madam Peng an honorary doctor in, doctorate in literature. And Massey's long-standing and close connections with China and its universities, government bodies, through our students, staff and alumni, will be permanently strengthened by that further association. One of the advantages Massey has in its globalisation agenda is that we are a diverse university with a broad range of strengths. There are many compatibilities in those areas of strengths, such as in design and in arts. Agriculture, in which we are now ranked 19th in the world, an outstanding achievement in my view, is underpinned by science and food production, which remains New Zealand's biggest business. And this in turn links to nutrition and health, both human and animal. Our diversity in campuses and modes of learning give students options that other providers are unable to offer. 
In Manawatu, our original and largest campus, we have several major construction projects underway. These include restoration and seismic strengthening of the Sir Geoffrey Perrin Building, part of the $58 million heritage restoration and Hokowit relocation project, and a $75 million upgrade and expansion of the veterinary complex, which will enable us to graduate up to 40 additional vets from one of our signature programs. We also have exciting plans for the future development of the Food HQ Super Campus in partnership with several neighbouring research organisations. Many of you will be aware that 2014 marks 50 years since Massey became a university. Our roots, however, as an agricultural college date back to 1927 and through our design school in Wellington to the 19th century. This year also marks 50 years of our groundbreaking and world-leading food technology programme. The faculty was formed to build on Massey's reputation as an institution that supported the primary industries, turning great ingredients into world-leading exports. When Massey's Bachelor of Food Technology degree was introduced in 1964, it was a first for New Zealand. Today, this innovative degree continues to ensure Massey leads New Zealand in the education of food technologists. Currently, we, we face some challenges with the softening enrolments being felt across the sector, but we have been given an opportunity to grow by the Tertiary Education Commission next year, and we need to ensure that we enrol those additional students. And it's important that young people recognise the value of ongoing learning and tertiary qualifications in a world where the nature of employment and the types of jobs people do is changing rapidly. That means that those who succeed will be those who have learned how to learn, how to adopt and how to adapt. Congratulations to all of you who have taken up the challenge to be where you are today. You will graduate proud of your achievement but also honoured by the reputational mantle that you have inherited. I challenge you to go forth as Massey alumni to make your own contribution to grow your own reputation, and in doing so, add further to the proud heritage that you are now part of. As part of your journey, we anticipate many of you will come back to us as you face the never-ending quest to keep your skills and knowledge up to date. You can be assured that Massey will be there to meet that need, whether it be through a course of full-time study or part-time through our world-class distance learning programme. Finally, I would urge you to stay connected to your alma mater and your university family through our Active Alumni Association. Congratulations. Continue to work hard and enjoy yourselves. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. By the authority of the Council of Massey University, I, Christopher Kelly, Chancellor, will now award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees on those to be presented and on those in absentia. Chancellor, the Professor of Nursing will present to you graduates and recipients of certificates, diplomas and degrees in the College of Health. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Health Science the graduands I am about to name. Waiatapu Jenna Louise Bell. <laughs> Julian Francis Hugh Chisholm. Irina Markovic. <laughs> Jacqueline Marie Martin. <laughs> Sanacha Naidu. Stacey Ann Robinson. Z. 
Zainab Safa. Erina Pasheta Tone. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Social Work, the graduands I'm about to name. Grace Louise Crabtree, second class honors. Melissa Alice Fieldsend, second class honours. Odette Priscilla Fury, second class honours. John Anthony Galchi, first class honours, Massey Scholar. Nicola Claire Griffith, second class honours. <laughs> Wendy Madge Rattray, second class honours. <laughs> Cheryl Lorraine Thompson. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Sport Exercise, the graduands I'm about to name. Yvotte Britz. <laughs> Stacy Lee Erickson. Warwick David Esler. <laughs> Joshua Maitland Grieg. <laughs> Jamie Louise Lampard. Brooke Jane McFall. Robert Mackenzie Power. Samuel Raymond John Townsend. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in public health, the candidate I am about to name, Catherine Mary Morton with merit. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in sport management the candidate I'm about to name, Ashley Thomas Casson. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Public Health, the graduand I'm about to name, Caroline Sarah Fife with merit. Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the certificates and diplomas are also awarded to those who are in absentia. Thank you, Chancellor. Chancellor, the Associate Pro Vice Chancellor will present to you graduates and recipients of certificates and diplomas and degrees in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences.
Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Certificate in Arts the candidate I'm about to name, Andrew John Patrick Crozier. Chancellor, this award is made posthumously and will be collected on behalf of Andrew John Patrick Crozier by his father, Dr. Nick Crozier, and his sister, Sally Crozier. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Diploma in Arts the candidates I'm about to name, Valentin Antonio Faro Gomez. <clears throat> Nicola Marie Francis. Mara Joy Valencia Roque. Tamara Jane Shaw. Graham Charles Walker. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Arts, the graduands I'm about to name. Janine Mary Adams. <clears throat> Haley Louise Anderson. Joshua Edward Arnott. <laughs> Brittany Sky Boyd. <laughs> Michael Butterfield. Nicola Gwen Coburn. Amy Charlotte Cousins. Mark Fotheringham Creedy. Joanne Leslie Marie Donaldson. Brogan Joy Dunce. Noel Cameron Eichbaum. Susan Rachel Fuller. Amber Kimberly Gearlings Parker. Kayla Renee Gray. Micah Francisca Gersgen. <laughs> Alan Earl Harvey. <laughs> Erica Kendall Hume. 
Chancellor, this award is made, is made posthumously and will be collected on behalf of Erica Kendall Hume by her parents, Owen and Carrie Hume. Abby Renee Lawrence. <laughs> Jessica Mary Lynn Lowe. <laughs> Scott John McDonald. Alexandra Francis Morgan Murray. Orphe Gairi Moitis Mikalad. Apirana McDonald Tefariana Tefarangi. Susanna Nell Potts. <laughs> Jerome Richard Pula. <laughs> Jamie Laura Ellen Rogers. Miriam Verena Schroeter. Nathaniel Lance Harris Sextus. Grayson John Martin Skirman. Kimberly Cyril Esquera Sai.
Brady C. Rhiannon Warriner. Gemma Lucy Wood. Vanessa Ann Wooler. Thank you, Chancellor. It is now my great pleasure to invite Ms. Glennis Philip Barbara, Associate Dep Deputy Chief Executive of Child, Youth and Family and previously Chief Executive of the Maori Language Commission to address the graduands. Ms. Glennis Philip Barbara is from Ngāti Poro Iwi Pahahitu Iwi. She hails from Terafiti, where her mother's family and people lived and worked for many generations. The family is fluent in Māori and English and as a result of a lifetime long commitment to the Māori language, recovery and revitalisation. Her father's people came from Fufar in Scotland and her grandfather immigrated to make his home in Danavirk, New Zealand in the early 1900s, where her father was born and raised. Ms Philip Barbara considers herself fortunate to have lived all over New Zealand as a result of her father's military service and to have retained strong and deep roots back to the East Coast. From June 2010 to November 2014, Ms. Philip Barbara was Chief Executive of the Maori Language Commission. She now holds the position of Associate Deputy Chief Executive of Child, Youth and Family. Ms. Philip Barbara also held leadership positions at Terafiti Polytech and is an academic at Auckland and Massey Universities. She completed a Bachelor of Arts in Maori Studies and Sociology at Massey University's Manawatu campus and was a Maori representative on NUSA at that time. E ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā kārangaranga maha, kia koutou rangitāne iwi, O tira, ngā kaitiaki o tēnei whenua nui, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Koutou ngā mate kua haere, haere. Ka rere ngā mihi, kia koutou, te whānau o Andrew Crozier, te whānau huki o Erika Holm, tēnā rā koutou. Kaore e kore, kua puta mai, te pauritanga i tēnei wā tonu, engari, he whiwhinga nui tonu, ki tā koutou tamariki. Nō reira, ka nui te aroha. Ka rere hoki ngā mihi kia koutou, ngā ringa whakahaere o te whariwānanga nei, tēnā rā koutou i te rangi, i tēnei wā. Kei te huri aku mihi kia koutou te whānau wini ata, kua hua te tahi o ngā puti puti o te whakatipuranga rua mano i tēnei rangi tonu. Petina, Petina, kai hea koe. Kā nui te mihi kia koe te tuahine, no tātou katoa te whiwhi i tō koutou mahi nui, kua tau ki uta te reo i tēnei rangi tonu, tēnā rā koe te tuahine. O te rā kia koutou, ngā i ka āwhiro, kua tau mai i tēnei rangi nui, tēnā rā koutou katoa. And it's okay, I am bilingual, so I'll switch over and switch back and we'll just keep it, keep it moving along. Look, I'm really pleased to be standing before you today as a proud graduate of Massey University. Like you, I wobbled across the stage in about 1997, I think, worried about whether or not I'd make it across in one piece in my lovely heels, my new dress and my brand new robes. And I remember that feeling very well. And so today, uh, as I move around and work in different places of interest to me, I have, a, I have a practice that I consider to be important. When Massey calls, I come. 
That is my commitment to this place. That is my commitment to all that this university has invested in me and my whānau. Nō reira, nō ku, te whiwhi, te kōrero, kai mui o koutou aro aro. And look, it's occasions like this that remind us the blood, the sweat, the tears, the two-minute noodles, and all of those things that we endure as students, annoying our families, endless assignments, endless piles of reading, hours in the library. It's on days like this that we can truly say that it's been worth it. Because of course, days like these are not for us alone. Days like these are to be shared with our family, with our friends, and with all of those people who have stood beside us all throughout the journey. And it's really important that you, you graduates today, you realize that those of us who work and toil away in the corridors of Wellington, you are the ones we wait for. We feverishly scan the pages of the graduation profiles, looking for fresh, I wasn't gonna say meat actually, uh, looking for fresh ideas, for new recruits, for new ideas, for, for ways of thinking and being in the public sector that are new, bold, innovative and exciting. So do know that there is much to be gained from us in Wellington, from your, your culture, your energy, your vigour and your vitality. You are in fact our hope for the future. And while you might be just thinking about your job prospects right now, maybe you're employed, maybe you're not, maybe you're still looking, maybe you're thinking about a big holiday, most likely you're thinking about a big party, or maybe a big dinner, or maybe that's planned for straight after this. What I want to do this afternoon is encourage you to think really broadly about the possibilities that stretch out in front of you now that you've achieved your degree. And I want to share with you a bit of a story about social and community entrepreneurship, social and community innovation. And I want to encourage you to stretch your minds to think a little bit more broadly than just landing a job. So I have a couple of uh, examples of this entrepreneurship that I want to share with you. And, I'm, and I do realise that life is tough for many New Zealanders right now. And I know that life as a student is far from glamorous. We know that it's difficult to move through. But you know what? With a degree, um, you've actually attained your ticket out of two-minute noodle hell. You've attained your ticket out of poverty and living on potatoes. But for a number of New Zealanders, this is certainly not the case today. So I want to encourage you to think about what we can do to turn your skills and energy into something that supports New Zealand as a much wider and broader whānau. And I want you to understand how doing this work, how this kind of innovation in service of others can actually boost and tr transform your future career by building the kinds of networks and relationships and experiences that money can't buy. Social innovation, the beauty of it, makes you the CEO of your own idea. It forces you to work within tight fiscal restraints and it requires that you perform small miracles every day, just small ones. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a job description for a position like that, but let me tell you, it's hugely satisfying. The good news is, is that other people are already doing this kind of thing. Other people are already out there making inroads into our community and absolutely rocking community level social innovation and enterprise. And you know what? One of the best examples is happening right here. In fact, the doors are probably open today. There's a place in Palmerston North called Just Zilch. Anybody heard about them? Just Zilch? No? Oh, good. All right. Well, brace yourselves. This group, just an ordinary group of people, they gather surplus food from around the city, right? Nothing particularly marvellous or miraculous in that. They gather surplus food from around the city and they've occupied a little gull service station, with permission, of course, they've occupied this space. They gather the food into this place and they fling their doors open every day 
to anyone in the community who can demonstrate a need, right? And guess how you demonstrate your need? You just turn up. There is no paperwork, there is no forms to fill, there is nothing at all that you have to do to prove your need. Simply put, this group collects our surplus as a community and provides it to people with a need. Now, the best thing about a place like this is that when you find yourself a bit short, there's no judgment and there's no attitude when you arrive at the door. You're simply invited in, you gather what you need, you take it home, you feed your family and you move on. And I tell you what, rather than ignore perfectly good surplus in our community, these people are putting it to good use. These entrepreneurs have been running this initiative for a number of years now. They do it quietly, they do it out of the public eye, and they get on with it. And one of the most stunning features of this is that it is, quite frankly, the most simple idea in the world. Take surplus, redistribute it to people in need. And for many families, it makes the difference, quite literally, between eating and not eating on some days. And so this brilliant concept inspired a group of friends in Wellington to take action and do something similar. So there's a group called Rauaroha that gathers surplus non-perishable goods and redistributes them to communities in need. But this group decided that rather than face the potential overhead cost of setting up in a permanent residence, they've developed the concept of pop-up shops. Now you would see them at Christmas time, wouldn't you, popping up all over the town. So they gather the surplus, they establish a pop-up top shop in a community of need, people come in, they move through, they gather what they need to clothe their children, to put blankets on their beds, to put shoes on their feet, and they move off again. Again, this focus on the redistribution of existing surplus makes the pop-up shop a place where people get to maintain their dignity, despite the fact that they have needs. The group gathers stuff, people's stuff, you know, the stuff that's in our garage, the stuff that's in our wardrobes, clogging up space, those 20 spare pairs of shoes that are sitting out the back somewhere. They gather it all up and take it into communities. The other thing that this group has been doing is developing relationships with schools. Now, I don't know how many of you have been to a school fair or a school gala lately, but have you seen the piles of stuff left over after a white elephant or a book sale? Right? This group gathers it all up, gets it into the community. Now, the group was in Hutt Valley last weekend, and I can tell you what, that space for that one day, it was absolutely rocking. To be quite frank, the group had no idea how the concept might or might not work in Wellington. And the group responsible had made sure that everything that was in the shop was of absolute high quality. I mean, just because... Uh, you have needs, doesn't mean you ought to accept that people might give you rubbish, right? Fair enough? And so the place was filled with high quality goods, the people they came all day long. And I can confirm, uh, because I was there, there were a number of people, in fact most of the people who arrived on the day had an empty puku as well, so needed a kai. And guess what? There were boys out the back on the sausage sizzle doing the kiwi thing, cooking up the sausages, wrapping them in a bread and rolling them out for the people coming into, in, into the shop. Now, the people who came to the store, <clears throat> they came, they gathered, they had a kai and they left and were a lot better off and a lot happier for it. Now, the beauty of this model is that it has no operating overheads, well, at least none that are borne by the people running the shop. Volunteers man the shop, the community provides the venue. The surplus is other people's surplus, unwanted surplus. The group itself transports the gear. Everybody involved in the, in the Rauaroha pop-up shop uh, has a very full garage at the moment in preparation for Christmas. But look, it's the kind of concept that's easy to do. You can do it in your spare time, and it's something that really makes a difference. And all it took to create this opportunity was for a group of friends to get together over a cup of tea one night and decide that something must be done. Now, 
I encourage you, our graduates, I encourage you, in fact, I implore you to think about the many, many ways that you can take this degree that you've earned and apply it for social good, for community good, in ways that perhaps you hadn't thought of. There is so much more to making our lives rich than paid work. There is so much more to life than simply getting to this day, this momentous day, and thinking, ha ha, right, I'm there, I've arrived, it's all over. Believe you me, this is the beginning of a long and exciting journey that you will take. And I want to encourage you, with your degree, with your friendships, with your connections, with your status as Massey graduates, your intelligence, your good hearts, your determination, you have everything you need in front of you to make a very real difference every single day for the people who live in your community. And you know what? I can't wait to see and hear and to read of the feats of Massey graduates. I have absolute faith that every single one of you will set out and do exactly that in your own way, in your own time, and in your own communities. And so in closing, I want to leave you with the words of a favourite writer of mine, Maya Angelou. And this is what she says. When we come to it, we, the people, created on this earth, of this earth, we have the power to fashion for this earth a climate where every man and every woman can live freely without sanctimonious piety, without crippling fear or poverty of spirit. When we come to it, we must confess that we are the possible. We, we are the miraculous, the true wonder of this world. That is when, and only when, we come to it. Tēnā koto katoa. Thank you, Ms. Philip Barbara. Uh, as you said, graduands, your journey is not over, it has just started. We will now proceed with the conferment of degrees in the award of university certificates and diplomas. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Communication the graduands I'm about to name. Holly Emma Rose Anderson. Sarah Anna McMillan Leotow. Ashley Nicole Sheet. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Education, the graduands I'm about to name. Florida Puatoa Lukitao. Heather Sharon Simmons. Jill Ann Southern. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Education Adult Education, the graduand I'm about to name, Annette Fakafo Uvalufa Winita. <laughs> 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 
Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Education, Teaching, Primary, and the Diploma in Education Studies, the graduands I'm about to name. Araha Doreen Kale. Jamie Lynn McCauley. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Speech and Language Therapy, the graduand I'm about to name, Shadira Tanya Este Miranda. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the conjoint degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Business Studies, the graduand I'm about to name, Jody Ann Woods. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the conjoint degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, the graduand I'm about to name, Jessica Grace Scott Richards. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the graduate certificate in teaching English as an additional language the candidate I'm about to name, Anne Margaret Wilson. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Graduate Diploma in Arts, the candidate I'm about to name, Heidi Carlene Thompson. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Graduate Diploma in Teaching Primary, the candidate I'm about to name, Samuel James McGuire. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Graduate Diploma in Teaching Secondary, the candidates I'm about to name, Rebecca Amy Jack. Elizabeth Ann Johansson. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the Postgraduate Diploma in Development Studies, the candidate I'm about to name, David John Tattersfield. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the postgraduate diploma in Māori Visual Arts, the candidate I'm about to name, Tehemo Ata Henare with distinction. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Arts, the graduands I'm about to name. Kerry Michelle Conlon, Master at Scholar. <laughs> Ch 
Malcolm Stewart Davy, second class honours. Robert James Gilbert, first class honours. <laughs> Philip Rowley Lascelles, first class honours. <laughs> David Alexander Holden McIntosh. Laura Ann Pascal, second class honors. <laughs> Timania Rickard, first class honors. <laughs> Niniwa Short with Merit. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Education, the graduand I'm about to name, Nathaniel Philip Laurens, with merit. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of International Development, the graduands I'm about to name. Virginia Claire Adams, with distinction. <laughs> Julie Ann Farrell, with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of International Security, the graduands I'm about to name. Philippa Louise Barrett. <laughs> Daniel James Brunt with merit. Zoe Joanne Chadwick, with merit. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Hoadley, with distinction. Peter Andrew Olds with merit. <laughs> James Durward Thompson. <laughs> Tracy Tibbs with merit. Teresa Patricia Toia with merit. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Resource and Environmental Planning, the graduands I'm about to name. Alice Mary Naylor. Kate Louise Pascal, with merit. <laughs> Haley Marie Thomas, second class honors. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Philosophy, the graduands I'm about to name. Lynn Nichols. <laughs> Lynn 
Mary Stevens. Kerry Jane Williamson with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor, the degrees are also conferred and the certificates and diplomas are also awarded to those who are listed in absentia. Thank you, Chancellor. It is now my great pleasure to invite Adam Sno Soman to present an item. Adam Snowman Soman has just completed his final year at Palmerston North Boys High School, where he has been part of a prominent singing group, OK Corral. Adam has been a member of the National Secondary Students Choir and recently won a National Songwriters Award for his original music. Adam will be performing Brother by Matt Corby. to your brother he's calling out your name oh, oh, oh hiding under the covers with no one else to blame oh, oh you couldn't help out your own neighbor you couldn't tell it to his face no you were messed up by the blame Cower in the corner, confide in your father, let it out and say, let it pass away. Sleep now under my skin, make sure. out your name oh, oh, oh hiding under the covers with no one else to blame oh, oh you couldn't help out your own neighbor you couldn't tell it to his face no you were messed up by the blame you cower in the corner confiding your father Your 
yourself out of this state, dear, as long as you want to. Thank you, Adam, for your item and all the best for the future. We will now proceed with the conferment of degrees in the award of university certificates and diplomas. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation and the degree of Doctor of Education the graduands I am about to name. Kirsty Jane Farrant. <clears throat> Ms. Farrant used self study as a methodology for reflecting on her teaching and developed a framework for her classroom practices. She found that assumptions had been made within her teaching, but that by having discussions with the students, much of the tension arising from such assumptions were dissipated. Use of her framework could be extended to other classroom practitioners wishing to reflect on their own practice. Please welcome Dr. Ferrant. <laughs> Jane Elizabeth Hardcastle Nay Wellicott. The biological sciences have been problematic for nursing education and practice for many years. Ms. Hardcastle explored teaching and learning experiences of 10 New Zealand nursing lecturers to identify factors that influence their preparedness with bioscience integration when teaching nurses. She found that participants' perceptions of the value of biosciences underpin their preparedness and the way they evaluate learning, teaching and practice experiences. Dr. Hardcastle. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Doctor of Philosophy the graduands I am about to name Paul Joseph Adams. The now legendary 1939 Fraser Beebe statement on equality of educational opportunity has shaped the nature of education in New Zealand. Mr. Adams found the progressive education that it inspired did not just emerge from an educational vacuum. Instead, it grew from the fertile ground of new education ideas that had blossomed across the country during the interwar years. Dr. Adams. Julia Mary Budd. <laughs> New methods are needed to promote cross-disciplinary collaboration when studying and developing resolutions to complex real-world issues. Ms. Budd developed and evaluated a design-based approach to cross-disciplinary collaboration when studying inclusion for those with impairments. She found design-based research, based on a critical realist philosophy, is useful for developing and evaluating cross-disciplinary approaches. Dr. Budd. <laughs> J. 
Jan Erica Chapman. <laughs> Ms Chapman undertook a longitudinal investigation of Year 12 students' motivation to succeed in NCEA Level 2 English Achievement Standards. Students identified a variety of factors influencing their motivation to achieve. Ms Chapman's study also highlighted the complex, dynamic, multidimensional and situated nature of students' motivation in this high-stakes certification assessment context. Dr Chapman. <laughs> Clifford Dean Harwood. Mr. Harwood investigated the influence of students' understanding of technological modelling on their ability to make informed decisions when developing technological outcomes. He found a strong correlation between understanding of concepts and reasoning and decision making in technological practice. He concluded that when teachers support students to develop curriculum understandings of technological modelling, their technological practice becomes more sophisticated. Doctor. Howard. <laughs> Heather Adele Heron Spears, Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> Men may approach cancer with less health knowledge and less skill in their processing emotional distress. Ms. Heron Spears explored the distinctive nature of men's cancer-related distress and coping with the help of 27 male cancer patients. She found the need for greater control and suggested interventions to achieve this. Dr. Heron Spears. It's very lonely that bit there, so you can keep clapping if you like to. Marilyn Joyce Innes, Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> In New Zealand, education services sold to foreign fee-paying students are categorised as an export industry. Using South Korea as a case study, Ms Innes examined the origins of export schooling markets in New Zealand and the positioning of children as tradable commodities and export products. She concluded that any further proliferation of neoliberal credentialist and competitive practices in education has the potential to attract private investment and international education corporations into state education. Dr. Innes. David Osborne. <laughs> Information is limited regarding how and why terrorist cells change over time and place. Mr. Osborne contributed to the study of terrorist cells by developing a methodology to model their evolutionary history. His work could provide a method for deciphering the complex interactions that occur between terrorist cells and the landscape. Dr. Osborne. <laughs> Chitinan Pong Suwan. <laughs> Thai nursing students studying in college programs have had low pass rates in external registration exams for a decade. Ms. Pong Su Wan applied grounded theory methods to explore these students' learning processes to understand what underpinned the low pass rate. She found that some who transited their learning from meeting their supervisor's expectations to an internal desire to learn demonstrated critical thinking skills and passed exams. Dr. Pong Su Wan. Sally Helen Potter. <laughs> the 
volcanic unrest is the key indicator of an impending eruption, which allows warnings to be communicated. Ms. Potter created a world first volcanic unrest index and found that Taupo Volcanic Centre had more frequent unrest than previously recognised. She also developed New Zealand's new volcanic alert level system, Dr. Potter. Ayara Pranpravit. <laughs> Metabolic syndrome is becoming a major public health challenge worldwide. Ms. Pranpravit investigated the potential of high bush blueberries to alleviate markers for metabolic disorders. She found that consumption of blueberries could minimise some metabolic changes related to insulin resistance and improve glucose tolerance. Dr. Pran Pravit. <laughs> Heather Ruth Robertson. Primary health care nurses were considered crucial to the implementation of the 2001 New Zealand Primary Health Care Strategy. Ms Robinson investigated the impact of the strategy's implementation on primary health care nurses in Tairawhiti. She found several factors that negated the effective deployment of primary health care nurses. Dr Robertson. Adele Jeanette Scott. <laughs> Ms. Scott explored the profiles of teachers of languages in primary and secondary schools. Important themes emerged, including that being a teacher of languages requires a commitment of self and an ability to advocate for the learning area. Ms. Scott highlighted the challenges to the role and identified teachers of languages, including their often tenuous position of the languages learning, sorry, of the often tenuous position of the languages learning area in schools. Dr. Scott. <laughs> Fang Yui Li. Sua a li ai. The level of student achievement in senior secondary school science in Samoa has been a concern. Mr. Sua a li ai explored the teaching and learning processes that occur in year 12 chemistry classrooms in Samoa. He identified institutional and classroom factors as well as Samoan cultural values that acted as supports or barriers to students' achievement. Dr. Sua'a Li'i.
Bettina Bray Winiata. The survival and prosperity of a distinct cultural group is not guaranteed unless something is done by each generation. Ms. Winiata drew on the symbolism of her cultural estate, Na Tuku Waru, and the actions of her parents' generation to regenerate the forever present past for the future cultural, economic, and educational prosperity of her people. Dr. Black. Uh, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, uh, academic staff and the University Council. Uh, e te iwi, katahi i te tahi mea <coughs> atahua, ki te kite ia koutou katoa i roto i tēnei mea o te atahua o te mātauranga. No te rā nei kā mihi ki tēnei kāinga kōrero, tēnei whare tapu a nā toko waru. Ko te whare tipu nga whakairo o nā toko waru, nā tohu kōrero i kohi kohitia i roto i te tuhituhi kairangi a tākoutou mokopunga. Ka tahi ka whakahuihuitia mai e ia ngā whare kōrero o kaupapa ruamano. Ka kitea ki roto i a nā toko waru, me kaupapa ruamano, te reo me ona tikanga, hei whāngai i ngā whakatipuranga, ngā heke o ngā iwi e toru, ngā ti tuarangatira, ngā ti raukawa, ngā ti pare raukawa, me ngā whare kōrero katoa o roto i te tonga o raukawa. Ka heire mai tā koutou mokopuna, ka kite i te atāhua o a koutou mahi, Ka whakahuihuitia mai e ia ki roto i te tohu kairangi, ko tēnei te tohu kairangi tuatahi o te ao whānui ko tuhia ki roto i tō koutou reo rangatira. Kairangi, Petina Winiata.
Counselor. At the conclusion of the ceremony, guests are requested to remain in their seats until the processions have assembled in the foyer. I declare this congregation to be adjourned. Please join with us in singing the national anthem, God Defend New Zealand, led by Andrew Jamison, the words of which are printed on the screen, and we will begin with the Maori version of the anthem. Please stand. <laughs> 